Junior Scholars of the Global Round. How was lunch? Would it have been better if it had pineapples on it? We are now gathered here for an event called the Debate Showcase. Scholars, yesterday at your own debate schools, you have debated with your teams across different topics. And now today, you are also going to be debating, but not with your team. Here at today's debate showcase, we have brought together some of the top speakers in the junior division community from various different countries, and we have made new teams. These new teams will soon be announced, and just like at your regional round debate showcases, if you hear your name announced, please approach the stage, grab all the things you need in order to make your debate speeches, and you guys will be undergoing a new debate with the entire community here today as role models and as exemplars for debate. But the reason that it is called the showcase is not just because you are showcasing your debate, it is because that the whole community as a whole gets to showcase its own ideas as well. Because after the speakers on stage are finished with their speeches, there will be an opportunity for all of you guys to put forward your thoughts about the motion at hand, a motion that is relevant to everyone in this room. Before we begin the showcase, much like in your regional rounds, there are several ground rules to cover. First of all, scholars, please remember to be respectful to yourselves, to other scholars, and to the different countries represented here today. And as in your regional rounds, the judges for today's debate showcase are not going to be the adults that flew with you here today. They are going to be an additional number of nominated speakers because, of course, in a community this large, at the largest ever global round, there aren't just eight amazing speakers. There are many, many, many of them, and besides the eight that are going to be on stage, there will be a panel of speakers who will take place in this magnificent row of seats that has been set up in front of the stage. So you have VIP access to the speakers. And after each debate, each member of the community, not just the top debate showcase speakers, is encouraged to share their thoughts about the debate and to continue the discussion. All right, and without further ado, I do think it is time for us to find out who is in the showcase. Scholars, do you want to know who is on the two teams? All right, we will begin with the affirmative side. Our first affirmative speaker today comes to us from a nation with one of the largest rounds in the season, from the United Arab Emirates, from Sunmark School, it is Carlota Figueroa Ortiz. Carlota, please bring everything that you need up here to speak. The affirmative side will sit at the table with the lightsaber. Our second affirmative speaker is a scholar that comes to us from Indonesia. From Sekola High Scope, Indonesia. This scholar is Keisha Putri Ivansini. Our third affirmative speaker comes to us from the land down under, from Australia, from Iona Presentation College. It is Lucinda Flavel. And our final affirmative speaker comes to us from 
the country of Pakistan. From LGS Muslim Town, it is Snavil Imran Yusuf. Scholars, as they make their way down here, make some noise for your affirmative team. And we now move on to announce the speakers for the negative team. Your first speaker comes to us today from not so far away, Singapore. From Tanglin Trust School. It is Abhay Verma. Scholars, our next speaker on the negative team comes to us from our global round host country of Malaysia. From MRSM Alor Gaja, it is Nur Adlina Nabila Rusli. Our third speaker on the negative team comes to us from China, from Shanghai United International School, Gubei. It is Catherine Wang. And your final negative speaker. One of the speakers on stage who will have traveled the farthest to get here today from the country of Egypt, from Cairo American College, Anastasia Lyaknovich. As they make their way to the stage, scholars, please give it up one more time for your negative team. And now, scholars, we have our two teams of speakers, but we need our panel of judges. If you see your name here, please do proceed down to the row of seats in the front. You will have, as mentioned, VIP view of the debate. Alicia, with whom does our panel begin? Our first panelist today is Timothy Tyler S. Uy. Followed by Nikita Arefiev. Your next panelist is Advik Uni. As well as Yusur Al Jaburi. Followed by Samuel Catchpole. And Anthony Shen. Your next panelist is Nam Tan Wen. Who is preceded by Dasuni Tota Baduge? And is also joined by Charlie Peters. As well as Nucha Faisamran. Your next panelist is Ayush Balaji. And Fatima Thraya Sharif. Followed by Sang Long T. And Michelle Batulga. And scholars, your final panelist today is Wood Yi Pearl Fu.
scholars, please give a huge round of applause for your panel. And Chauncey, we have an affirmative team. We have a negative team. We have a VIP panel. What do we need next? Scholars, we need emotion. So show us your emotion. The motion for today's debate will be resolved that a more entangled world is a more peaceful world. Scholars on stage, you have 15 minutes remaining. Scholars elsewhere, as they prepare, let's listen to a bit of soothing music. From the affirmative team, please approach the podium and begin. Scholars, give a huge round of applause for your very first debate showcase speaker. <laughs> Speakers, you'll have up to four minutes to speak. At three minutes, our panel of judges will wave Skittles in the air. And at four minutes, they will throw Skittles in the air, which will be your signal to stop. Good afternoon, adjudicators, audience, opposing team, and fellow teammates. My name is Lucinda Flavel, and I'm the first speaker for the affirmative team. And we firmly believe that the notion that a more entangled world is a more peaceful world is true. My team and I define this case as that a more, greater, or additional amount of entanglement sorry, of entanglement Entanglement, which we define as something that is twisted together or caught together, in our world, the collection of all nations, societies and cultures is more peaceful. To start, I will say some pre-rebuttal. The other side will try to tell you that an entangled world will create war and destroy our peace. This is utterly untrue because war is created because of the differences and the conflict that is created because we do not understand each other. If we are connected and we're entangled within each other, the whole world will understand each other. This will, this will completely eradicate war from our society. Our second speaker, Keisha, will say that entanglement of the world will contribute to solve international issues that face every one of us today. And our third speaker, Sabil, will say it will stop racism and help all those who are affected by it. And our fourth speaker, Carlotta, will rebut on the other team's case and reinforce, reinforce our case. I will now say that because we understand each other, our world will become much more peaceful. The whole reason why we have issues, why there is conflict, why there is war, why there are fights, even without, without our own friendships, schools and communities, is because we don't understand each other. And how do we understand each other? We under 
understand each other by knowing what we were thinking, how we were feeling, by being entangled and being by connected. Connected like we communicate. If you communicate, which is a connection, you understand more. You understand what other people are thinking and that can help you to make peace and to stop conflicts. In conclusion, my team and I firmly believe that the notion that a more entangled world is a more peaceful world is true. Thank you. Thank you very much. Teams, you have one minute to prepare. First speaker from the negative team. Please approach the center of the room and begin. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm the first speaker from the negative side, and we strongly oppose a resolution that a more entangled world means, more, means a more peaceful world. But first, we'd like to define the resolution. We believe that entangled means more connections between people all over the world. Our world is a very entangled world, as we are very connected about, with each other compared to decades before. And, it's, and our world is still not a very peaceful world. Although people can communicate much more easily, there's still a lot of conflicts going on on social media and through other mediums that we communicate through. We believe that more communication between people and more, com and more connections will lead to more conflicts and more unsettlement between people instead of peace. And therefore, we strongly oppose the resolution. Now, before moving on to our two arguments today uh, about why there will be more conflicts uh, created because of more connections, some rebuttals to our opponent's argument. They talked about how more connections between people will lead to more understanding and therefore will lead to a much more peaceful world. However, we believe this is untrue because more connection does not necessarily mean more understanding between people. Our status quo have already proven this to be true because although our world is very connected as people use social media and connect with each other on a daily basis, there's still a lot of conflicts going on between people with different backgrounds. Humans have a tendency to be afraid to things that we do not understand. And this is why that we reject people that are different to us. Um, we, see this, we see this happening through problems such as racism and a lot of different problems that's going on in our world. And therefore, we believe that more entanglement is more likely to lead to more conflicts and that are more peace and understanding between each other. Now moving on to our two arguments. First of all, we believe that more, uh, more connections between people on social media will only lead to more conflicts. Our world consists of many different cultures, and many of these cultures have conflicting ideas. For example, in religion, different religions can have conflicting doctrines, and therefore a lot of people disagree with each other when they're expressing their ideas on social media, which can lead to more conflicts and more unsettlement between people and create a less peaceful world. Our second argument is about immigration and how immigration can also lead to a lot of, more, a lot of conflicts. When people become more connected and have more communication, they can also move more freely across the world. This means more traveling and more immigration. However, immigration and traveling can also lead to a lot of conflicts between people. We see this in examples such as Brexit, for example, where the local citizens of the countries feel hatred towards outcomers because they believe that the outcomers are bringing a lot of problems to their country, such as higher unemployment rate. And therefore, immigration from a less de people from less developed countries into more developed countries will only lead to more conflicts and more unsettlement between people. And therefore, we strongly oppose our resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much, teams. You have one minute to prepare. Scholars, please give a huge round of applause for your second speaker from the affirmative team. Good afternoon, panelists, judge, panelists of judges, fellow teammates, opposing team, and respective audience. My name is Keisha Sini, and I come from Indonesia today standing as the second speaker, coming from the affirmative team, and we strongly support that resolve that a more entangled world is a more peaceful world. Before moving on to my points, I would like to create a rebuttal that the first speaker of the negative team has stated. She has stated that her definition is, the, the definition of entangled is more connected. This, ex, this is exactly our point though. With a more connected world, we could create more communications, we could create more friends, friendship, and we can create more create bigger bonds, and I will further elaborate that on my points. Today I will be discussing the point that 
would, with an entangled world, we could create more world contribution. Imagine if we work together, the peace we could create, the problems, the amount of problems that we create in this world. For an example, I would like to take up a, WC, a WSC curriculum that we are studying. As from, history, uh, from the history curriculum, we are learning a few of the organizations from the world, like NATO, G20, or even the UN. The NATO is a North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and it is an intergovernmental mil military alliances involving 29 European, European countries and American countries. Their purpose is to collect defense, and if one country against the NATO is involved, then all of the countries in it are supposed to help. This is creating a more peaceful world because we are saving one another. Another example is from the UN. The UN involves 193 countries in, uh, all added up. The purpose is to maintain worldwide peace. We are not distinguishing each other in the UN. We are helping each other. Thank you. For another example, G20. A G G20 is an organization that gathers up country for economic issues. We are helping each other. The only thing we are helping is, the only thing we are doing is creating peace, as Entangle says, is cause to become twisted together or caught in. Because we are all connected, as the, rebuttal have, as the rebuttal from the first speaker of the negative team, she has stated that the definition of Entangled is of, is more connected. That's exactly our point. We all are more connected. It is going to solve world problems. For all of the th these things that I've stated, we, as the affirmative team, believe that resolve that a more entangled world is a more peaceful world. Thank you. Thank you very much, teams. You have one minute. All right, scholars, give it up for your second speaker from the negative team. Good afternoon, honorable adjudicators, fellow opponents, members of the audience. My name is Anastasia Lyaknovich, and today I will be presenting the second argument on the topic of that a more entangled world will not lead to a more peaceful world. First of all, I would like to define the term peaceful as a lack of conflict. Now I will begin with the rebuttal of the points of the second speaker of the affirmative team. You said that entangling our culture cultures, entangling different people from different regions will lead to a more peaceful community as we can all work together, working on a better world, creating one global community. However, that is just a utopic idealism and it usually doesn't work like that. From the examples of devastating, devastating examples like World War II, we can see that nationalism take a, takes up a huge bit of why we have boundaries. That is exact, the exact reason why we have boundaries, because of conflicts of interest, because of people that do not agree with other people. They set boundaries between themselves. For example, for example, uh, one example of actual entanglement that led to a big conflict is Shia Sunni Muslims right now. They have a huge conflict and they have so much hatred between themselves just because they live next to each other. Different opinions leave, lead to conflicts, and that is the exact reason why I'm standing here to prove that point right now to you. As everybody thinks they have a high moral ground, everybody in this room believes their opinion is more important than everybody else's. Even if you don't think that, if, even if you don't think that, subconsciously you think that you're right, and that is why it is considered your opinion. And that is why we don't think that a more entangled world is a better world, is a more peaceful world, as entangling those interests, because everybody will fight on that common ground, and it will never be found, and it will be lost in endless years of conflict to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, teams. One minute. Scholars, please give a huge round of applause for your next speaker. Good morning, adjudicators, my fellow opponents, 
and my respected teammates. My name is Sanab Al Imran and I'm from Pakistan and I'm the third speaker of the affirmative side. And I'm here. And I'm here to speak on the motion which is a more entangled world is a more peaceful world. Me and my respected teammates certainly agree with this. As we know that entanglement can bring us together. You know what? When entanglement is happening, when people come across different cultures, people come across different people, and we can find out how different people from different races and religions practice their own thing. Look. And look, as the, uh, if I'm not wrong, the second speaker from the negative side mentioned, that everyone here in the world has, you know, their own opinions and think that, that their opinions have a superiority. But look, if we have an entangled world, there are not going to be conflicts. Everyone is going to give respect to the other opinion. And just look. An entangled world can bring the world together and also decrease racism. For example, in 2017, the police killed about 1,000 people. And 27% were of, of them were black. So I asked the negative team, isn't that racism? Well, it is. It is racism. It is racism. And if we have an entangled world, we can decrease this racism. And look, whenever, look, the WSC this year is an entangled world. And look, let's, let me give my example that here, this, these three days, I have made a lot of friends from different cultures and different religions. I have made a lot of friends from different cultures and religions, and this is all due to entanglement. Look, we all over here are sitting under one roof because of entanglement. So that is why I'm here to clarify and say that entanglement can be one of the biggest factors to decrease racism and bring the world together and, you know, just stop spreading hate. I hope I've made my points clear. Thank you. Teams, you have one minute to prepare. All right, scholars, give a huge round of applause for your third negative speaker. Honorable Chair, worthy teammates, and fellow opposition, I am the third speaker for the opposition of the motion that a more entangled world is a more peaceful world. And me and my team are really opposed to this motion because of the points we have. Now, first off, I would like to start with some rebuttals. The third speaker of the, the, third speaker of the opposition stated that, stated stated that they can de decrease racism because of more entanglement. You are, we are already at the beginning of a utopia. It is not how they work. Everyone has their own point. Everyone has their own point of view. And there will be clashes from big wars to debating who, which, which type of pizza is better. They will be conflict. You cannot avoid that. Now, I'm going to move on to my points uh, opposing the motion. A more entangled world is not 
a more peaceful world. A point I have is social media. Social media connects us all. And what has that led to? Cyberbullying, conflict, death, suicide. It connects us all. Now, I'm going to give you a story of a boy in America who, was, who uh, committed suicide because of cyberbullying. A 14-year-old boy in Texas was cyberbullied for a year. He was depressed. He didn't know what to do. He had no friends. You can't expect a person like this to do anything. And it is because of a more entangled world. It is because of this we have conflict. We, have, we don't have peace. There are, uh, there are 4,400 deaths per year in, uh, uh, annually in cyberbullying. How does the, so I asked the proposition, how do they achieve to avoid that? Isn't death opposed to peaceful? So isn't this motion completely useless? Now, another point is on a global basis. Social media almost brought us to the brink of a nuclear war between the United States and North Korea. <laughs> on Twitter, a, a social media site, when Kim Jong, when Kim Jong Un said that, <coughs> said that he wouldn't agree to denuclearize, Trump said it would be met with fire and fury, and he talked about his nuclear big, big nuclear button. Now, the op proposition might argue that this has already been resolved, but it brought us to a brink of a nuclear war, which in the future can happen anytime, and which will result in deaths, conflict, and it will not be a more peaceful world. Now, what have I told you today? social media is detrimental to social media is detrimental to social media is a form of conflict which is not peaceful it yes it connects people but people with different viewpoints different arguments will only argue cuz they feel that they are right this creates conflict and this does not uh, outcome a more peaceful world what does the proposition have to say to this? Yes, they have one big arg argument, that we are all connected. But right now, I am telling you, it is because that we are all connected, we will have more, we will have more conflicts, because we have different viewpoints, and we argue more. Now, now, I would like to say a quote by a famous United States President, Barack Obama. Because, the, because of the internet and communicating, the clash of cultures is is much more direct and people feel less certain about their safety. So this is why I implore the judges to vote against this ludicrous motion that a more entangled world is a more peaceful world. Thank you. Thank you very much teams, one minute. Scholars, give a huge round of applause for your final speaker from the affirmative team. Culture, it enriches us, helps us grow, helps us learn. Yet, it can only be obtained by connecting and mixing with one another. Good afternoon, fellow teammates, worthy opponents, honorable adjudicators, and ladies and gentlemen of the audience. My name is Carlotta, and I am representing San Mar School from the United Arab Emirates, and I'm debating and I'm, and I'm an affirmative debating for the motion that an entangled world is a more peaceful world. I'd actually like to start by bringing up a point that the first speaker for the opposition made, that more connections doesn't mean that we are going to understand more. That just because we have more connections, we talk to more people, doesn't mean that we're going to understand their issues. And the point is that without the connections in the first place, without the exposure, we will never understand. And how are we supposed to live in a peaceful world in which we have to represent one another's interests if we don't even know what their interests are? 
And actually, continuing with the first speaker, uh, the point that she brought up about immigration, that it can lead to, for example, Brexit led to, to, higher, to higher unemployment rates. And that was caused because of entanglement, because we all came together. We can all just go to whichever country we want. And the truth is that different countries have different values. They have different strengths. And if we don't all join together, we're never going to learn beyond what our country is, what our country thinks. And actually, if we relate this to the World Scholars Cup theme this year, diplomacy. What is diplomacy? <laughs> diplomacy is solving issues, solving issues in a peaceful manner, in a manner in which we can all understand, we can all come together and agree upon. The thing is, there are 7,106 living languages in the world. So if we don't mix with one another, if I don't start talking to people from other countries, how am I supposed to talk to them? How am I supposed to communicate? How am I supposed to employ diplomacy? I won't be able to. They won't understand me. I won't understand them. Because without the entanglement in the first place, without me mixing with people from other countries, with other cultures, I will never understand what they want. For example, the Treaty of Versailles, it's what brought World War I to an end. And actually, it was, it was written in both English and French. Now, let's suppose that entanglement was that bad, that we should have never mixed together. How would they have come to the conclusion? How would have World War I ended? We would still be on a perpetual war if we hadn't come together and discussed this. And bringing up a fact that the second speaker for the opposition made, how we believe entanglement will cause war, it will cause issues, because we believe that our opinions are most important. And actually relating to what my third speaker, Snabel, said, that we, we, don't think that we don't think our opinions are more important if we're never going to learn about other opinions. Because of course I'm going to think that my opinion is the most important if I don't know anything else. We have to learn to understand. We have to learn to communicate in order to truly achieve world peace. And bringing up, um, continuing with the fact that the third speaker made about cyberbullying, how the entanglement in social media causes cyberbullying, suicide, depression. And while all of that may be true, we also have to consider that bullying happens in real life. So what are we supposed to do? Just not communicate with anybody? Because cyberbullying, because through social media, actually, we're all starting to learn about one another. We're, trying, we're starting to understand each other. In fact, there's a specific website called Seven Cups of Tea that helps people suffering through, for, of personality disorders, of, different, of depression, of PTSD, for example. It helps them come together. That is social media. That is helping people overcome what's hurting them so deeply. And, okay. and on, honorable adjudicators, members of the audience, I am not quite sure if the opposition realizes that we are here in a community, in an entangled community, where we are learning of one another. World Scholars Cup has brought us together. I learn from people from different countries like Egypt or India, but if I had never come here in the first place, if the entanglement had never existed in the first place, I would never know anything about the countries. And peace, if we really do want peace, we have to understand. We cannot just be fighting on our side and not, try, and not take into, con into consideration anything else. To be able to have the exposure to, to the issues, to be able to understand what other countries go through, we have to get entangled. We have to communicate. All and right, thank you very thank much. You. Yeah. Scholars, give it up for your fine third formative speaker. Teams, you have one minute. All right, scholars, give a huge round of applause for your final negative speaker. Communication does, does mean that more voices are being heard. But communication doesn't mean peace. Because when you communicate more, everyone can hear you. But will everyone understand you? Ladies, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, today I will be representing the last speaker for this 
for my team and this debate today. So first of all, I would like to go on with my rebuttals. So status quo today is that there is a lot of entanglement in the world already. For example, like my speakers have already stated, social media, which the affirmative team has been keep on repeating, saying that, oh, there has been no exposure towards any cultural uh, appropriateness in the world. But no, there is social media. They're completely um, neglecting the fact that there is exposure towards the world. But why is there still racism and... Um, well, basically racism. So for an example that my speakers have stated was Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump. Even though there is the appropriation of that there is cultural photos on the internet and you can research about it, there's still threats going on because every single person has their own opinion on something. They have their own schema on a certain uh, religion or a certain country. So just by saying, just by interlocking them, by meeting them, doesn't necessarily mean that you will understand them because uh, it's ridiculous to say that just because you've met someone and hear what they believe doesn't mean you will believe it. <clears throat> Second, um, they talked about how they talked about how war will not happen. Uh, war will not happen. But if, but it's already, like I stated, nuclear war. It's a threat that's already been going on right now. It's. Not, not just saying that oh, you meet someone, then you have no absolute hatred and resentment towards them. No. Also, what the second speaker stated was that there would be more contribution. Like, and she gave an example of the UN. But let me say, the UN, they're, the, they're mostly controlled by the privileged and the countries that have the rights. So the countries that have the rights, they will take control and then they will, they will do what they want. And, um, and also, the UN necessarily has countries that don't like each other. Just because they're put into a certain group doesn't mean not everyone will understand each other. Also, the third speaker talked about that, for an example, WSC is in, is for in, can make friends from entanglement. But let me say, they're looking at this from perspective of privileged people like UN and also for us that have the privilege of having knowledge about culture appropriances, but what about the minorities in countries that don't have exposure towards all these appropriances? They will not know what it's like to be friends with different people from different countries. So let me say, we're, ta we're taking this from a reality check point of view. They're taking it from a desired point of view and a euphoric world that they're trying to make up. But they're assuming everything will go right and we're facing the harsh, tr the harsh truth that no matter how much we try to put people together, there will still be resentment, there will still be racism, because that's how people do, that's, how, that's just how people are. People will never get together just because you say a few lines to help them get together. Also, the, the last speaker of the affirmative team also start, uh, talked about an example of World War I. After World War I, there be, people were brought together. But let me say, why was World War II, why did World War II happen? Because there's the resentment. Why are people fighting for their countries for their own sake? Why shouldn't we make world peace? Because to be honest, a peaceful world isn't about people living in one world without any wars. It's about love between the people in the countries. So last of all, I will be reaffirming my case, which I believe is the best point of view for this motion. First of all, we said more communication, more conflicts to a certain extent. Yes, but it overpowers the, the minority, which is that the exposure of social media, for example, communication. People, it's a platform where we express things, not bully hunters, where we just fight the bad thing, find the bad things in it. Um, also, we talked about Social media can make more conflicts about religion and they can move more freely, for, in, for example, immigration, which not necessarily means a good thing. <clears throat> so last of all, I would like to say that the harsh truth is that no matter what communication you say, even to a certain extent, that people have their own voices and their own opinions and you cannot fight your own instincts to prove that you are right. So from all the points that we have given and the case that we have set, I truly believe that this motion should fall and I implore the adjudicators and the judges to side with the negative team. Thank you. All right, scholars, that is your debate showcase. Please give a huge round of applause for all our speakers today. 
Now it is time for our panel of VIP judges to rise and follow Dylan into a secret location where they will decide who wins this debate. Now scholars, the debate on stage might be over, but we are now opening up the discussion to the community. What are your thoughts on today's debate? There are also several rules to follow with this community discussion. First of all, scholars and any other adults in the room, please remember to focus on the ideas here today. Much like yesterday's debate, the judges are not allowed to give feedback. And instead of giving feedback, provide your thoughts. Imagine that you are a speaker standing up here. What would you say and what would you contribute to the discussion? We also welcome any adults, parents, siblings, non-participants to contribute their thoughts. There are mic stands, please do cue. Chauncey, it's do we cool. have our first community contributor on top? We do. Hello from up here in the balcony where there's a slight delay from when you say something and when you hear it yourself. We have our first community speaker here. Uh, please try to keep your comments to about 30 seconds. Let's hear what you think about the debate and the ideas discussed today. All right, so I have a point for the proposition. Um, they, spoke, they, they didn't speak about the European Union, which I feel is an extremely important example of how entanglement really helps. Um, because the member states, there have been no major conflicts between them since the inception of the organization. And also there's been great scientific progress. Uh, this could be contrasted with, say, the situation between uh, the, like the Israeli settlements within Palestine, which is extremely se where they've sep we're separated from each other, and uh, that that leads to division and conflict between the regions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We move on to our first con community contributor from the ground floor. And scholars, this is just a reminder for us all to be respectful when somebody else is speaking. I'm Robin and I'm from Myanmar. Um, I want to address um, uh, an idea from the affirmative team. Um, the affirmative team has had a point where, you know, they have stated that um, we have to know their language and their culture carefully to make, like, make connections with them. Um, but I just want to say that if that was 100% true, then um, how do we even make friends in this community? Like, we are making friends here because we all have a uh, same connection that we, a language that we speak with. So I think the affirmative team should use the, that should refer to that example. All right, thank you very much. And from the other side of the ground floor, who do we have today? So I am David from the Osho Danila Kumar School in Ljubljana. And I would want to give an argument for the negative team because the affirmative team has used the argument that the Versailles Treaty has ended World War I. The um, negative team would have said, what was the reason that the wars even started? And it was because the people live in one world and they socialized uh, a lot with each other and they knew where they are and what they are. And because of that, they decided um, they didn't understand each other and it led to a con uh, confrontation. So it would be um, a good thing to say. All right, thank you very much. And we turn back to the balcony. I have a rebuttal to the point made by Team Affirmative. They talked about how the Treaty of Versailles had peace after World War I, but the Treaty of Versailles was one of the main reasons that World War II started, as it was too harsh on Germany. All right, thank you very much. Our next community contributor from the ground floor. Okay, hello, my name is Rayan, and I'm from Jess in Dubai. And my point is that um, in the, the World War I started because it was only first between two countries, but then because of the entangling alliances, all the other countries came in and fought for the countries. Therefore, it became a world war. Thank you. 
All right, and our next contributor. Um, I'm Anya from Oman, and um, I just want to say that entanglement is not always good, and uh, the, I think the affirmative team said that um, if they, if um, with like diplomacy and arguments and things, um, uh, if they kind of know and understand what the other, um, the other kind of, uh, what they're talking about and uh, the other culture, um, then they kind of can come to an agreement, but um, most people just kind of uh, stick to what they're saying and they really, like, even if they do understand what the other person is, where the other person is coming from, they don't really care because they're just like, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. All right, thank you very much. And also, we have heard from the students, but we have not yet heard from any of the parents or the teachers or the adults in the room. If there are any adults, non-scholars in the room who would like to contribute, please do approach the mic stands. We would love to hear your thoughts on today's debate. And now, from our balcony, who is the next community contributor? Um, so, my name's Ara from Tanglin Trust School, and I have a point for the affirmative team, because the negative team kept on brooding up the failures of the United Nations. However, they should have remembered that they threw entanglement in the UN. They managed to create a whole new summit between Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump in Singapore, so surely this means that entanglement does have its benefits. All right, thank you very much. And we move back down to the ground floor for our next community contributor. My name is Josephine, and I'm from Sokol, Ontario, Indonesia. I would like to give a point in favor to the negative team regarding the definition of entanglement, entanglement itself, considering that the whole debate was revolved around one definition. Entanglement can also be meaningful can also be defined as confused or complicated and not just being connected. So it could have been more expounded from there. Thank you. All right, and our next contributor on the ground floor. Um, so I'd like to say, um, so the affirmative team, was, uh, they were saying how entanglement leads to conversations among different countries and that leads to the countries understanding each other and then they might um, see the good in the countries but they didn't take to mind that they'll also, they'll also um, see the flaws in the countries or the things that the countries have that they might not agree with just as how the negative team was saying um, Everyone has an opinion, and they might not agree with the opinions that other countries have. So, if, if for example, if um, like the race in a country, the religion that the country follows, the ideas that the people in the country have, maybe other countries won't agree with that, and they might. And through conversation and entanglement, they might see the bad in the countries. They might see the flaws in the countries. Yeah. As it looks like our panelists are back, do we have any coaches in the room? One more time, coach in the room? Yes. Hi everyone, I'm Namrata Paul from Jakarta, Indonesia, originally from India. A, a very quick opinion, I, entanglement is really good. But what happens sometimes in my observation, the young children, the young generation when they go around the world, what happens, Sometimes when they get to know so many cultures, we know that they have a mind of their own. Sometimes they get confused. And you know, they have their own preferences wherein they get more freedom, more, you know, they can, what they can do, they like. But what happens, it brings a more generation gap, I feel, between their own culture, their own parents, what they want them to do, or what values they want, and what the students want. So I feel entanglement is good to visit, to know, to learn, 
and it will definitely broaden our perspective of what's going on. But definitely to remain in our boundaries, to have those values for, of our own culture is also very important. Thank you so much for listening to me. Let's take two more coaches, two more coaches, one over here. Okay. Uh, my name is Brian from Jakarta, Indonesia. I would like to say, I would like to commend uh, both affirmative and negative team. It takes a lot of courage and nerves for you guys to come up there and perform in front of everyone. So can we give them a round of applause, please, for their work? Um, hello, so my name is William. From, I am from Indonesia, Jakarta. Raffles, Bonokina. Yay! Woo! Anyways, so um, basically my point is this, though. The whole idea is not about whether it's a utopia, realistic, or whatever. It's about having an entangled world can lead or make a p more peaceful world. It's true because it has been pointed out by the affirmative team how it creates opportunities to get more connected, to know more people. You got, uh, the negative team mentioned about boundaries because we have um, our own interests. But then again, isn't that why we have conflicts in the first place? Because we kept to ourselves. We make boundaries in the first place. But if we are entangled in such a way that we are connected to one another, it creates such a way that it becomes, uh, we're just more open to them. So that's my point, thank you. All right, thank you very much, scholars. That is all the time we have for today. But can you please give it up for all the community contributors? I believe our panel is back. Panel of VIP judges, please rise and join us on stage to announce the verdict of this debate. Scholars, please give a huge round of applause for your VIP panel. debate and it was really close between both teams and we just like to say well done to all the debaters uh, so both of the teams debated great uh, uh, and both of the teams had great voice control so they raised it and lowered it at the right time they had great hand gestures uh, and great eye contact which made us connect better with them all the speeches were extremely well structured and I really enjoyed uh, listening to all these debates. I found that the rebuttals were explained in really great detail and I'd like to thank them for that. Um, um, both teams, they used a lot of syllabus content which really elaborated on their points and the rebuttals and I thought that, was, um, that made their speeches longer and more interesting and it caught the eye of all of the adjudicators and yeah. So without further ado, drum roll please. With the debate in the secret room, we have found the winners to be the negative team. Thank you panelists, congratulations negative team. Thank you affirmative team. Scholars, one more time, give it up for all your friends on stage. As per World Scholars Cup tradition, negative team, affirmative team, can you please cross the bench and shake hands? Thank you, panelists. Now, scholars, with the debate showcase completed, we move on to a different form of show. We move on to the Scholars Show. Scholars, make some noise for your performers. Now, 
In a moment, we'll be welcoming many acts from many schools across many different countries to showcase a variety of talents. If you see your name on screen, please come forward, join us backstage to check in with Alicia so that we can make sure we have made all the necessary arrangements for your performance. Scholars in the audience, while you wait, we'll play some, of course, lovely waiting music. <laughs> 